Here we go. Starting, feet parallel, push down into your feet. And we're gonna take a big inhale, stretch up. Exhale, and inhale. It's always a good way to wake up. Exhale, and it's nice to have a little like routine thing that you start your workout with that kind of signals your body and brain. So big inhale that you're about to work out. It's like the little transition palate cleanser. Exhale, and one more, big inhale. And it's good if the, the palate cleanser has a low threshold, right? So that when you roll out of bed, you're like, oh, all I have to do is wave my arms. One more, inhale and breathe, exhale. Okay, and now we're gonna bow forward, inhale and exhale, bow. Inhale, look halfway up, stretching that low back, exhale, round it, and then inhale, come all the way up and exhale, hands to your sides. So inhale. And exhale, bowing. Inhale, my tailbone lifts, my head lifts. And then exhale, round. Inhale, come up. Exhale, hands to your sides. And one more time, inhale. Exhale, bending the knees, stick your butt way back there. Inhale, look up. And then exhale, round, push into your feet. Keep your knees as wide as your feet. Come all the way up, stretch up. And exhale, hands to your sides. Okay, taking your feet wider, like um, twice mat distance, I guess. Uh, here we go. We're going to turn the toes out, bend the knees a little bit, and then we're just going side to side. So just get that movement going with the legs, get the arms going with the legs so that your arms swing the same direction you're going as your knees. I'm just doing a little bit side to side. So I'm not taking my knee very Really, it's just going to my ankle. It's not trying to go beyond my ankle. So I'm not straightening the opposite leg very well. Just a nice, easy elephant walk. That's what this is called. And then we add, come upright with your torso, and we add the arms reaching out. Okay, so just a nice, easy, low motion with the legs and reaching through the arms, crossing the body. A little check-in with the knees. I can show you from the side. I'm not that low, really. I'm just kind of doing an athletic stance. Reaching, reaching, and then reach up to the sky. So keep, keep that same action, but reach from the heel. Do whatever you want with your hands. You can open your hands at the top. You can keep them in a loose fist. It doesn't matter so much. We're just now getting to the side body, getting the breath going. Again, with this sort of low threshold movements in the morning then we go back to that low cross the body shoulder height and a nice rocking motion going through your legs and now we're going to go low down to the knees reaching reaching so now i am bowing forward obviously and i'm reaching just that easy motion in the legs side to side and back up okay good so that should get your heart rate up a little bit and now we're going to do some the, the foot balance exercise we normally do with the circle between our ankles. Let's do it hip distance apart today. So turn your heels slightly in, but they're not touching. Bring your arms up. So elbows below shoulders, wrists below elbows. That helps you relax the top of the shoulders. Come up on your toes, hold it there. So heels are hugging toward each other, but not touching. You have to imagine they're hugging into a thing like a volleyball or something about that size. Then bend your knees out and your knees are gonna go a little wide, right? Because they're bending over your toes, which are turned out. Torso is vertical. Lower your heels with control, slide up the wall. Come up on your toes, hold it, push into the ball of the big toe. Bend your knees out over your toes. Relax the top of your shoulders. Reach your heels down and slide up. One more time with control, nice and slow. We're warming up the toe joints, the foot muscles. Bend your knees out over your toes. Lowering, lowering. Reach your heels down and come on up. Now, now reverse, Go keep relaxing your arms. You should be able to hold your arms here still. Bend your knees, feet are flat, lean back a little bit. Get a little stretch through your ankles with your knees wide there. Then keeping your heels toward each other, lift your heels in and up. Come up, come up. Come up, work your toe joints, 
and lower your heels. And again, sitting low, we're going slow, rolling through the foot muscles there, heels in and up, come up, come up, and then lower your heels one more time. Sitting low, so my torso is not leaning forward at all. It's just stacked right on top of my hips. That, that way I have to use my legs and my butt muscles and my abdominals, lower your heels to balance. Okay, shake out the arms. And now we're gonna do a slightly wider side lunge. So take your feet even wider, more like four feet apart. Turn your heels in a little bit. Bring your elbows to your knees. Stick your butt way back there. So think of, um, and if I go too wide, I had a good way of explaining this the other day, actually. If I go too wide, then I can't get my shins vertical. So I want my shins to be vertical. And if I'm too narrow, then I also can't. So here, I want them to be the distance where when I'm pushing on my knees, shins are vertical. Then start going side to side and do straighten that opposite leg. And my, my torso is level with the floor, horizontal. Okay, I've got my elbows on my knees loosely. They might come off and I could just do this with my arms. I could do that same skater motion we were doing before, but I'm straightening one leg and then the other. And I'm keeping my hips nice and low and I'm sticking my butt way back there. The big, good groin stretch, getting the thigh bones to sit back in the hip socket. And just teaching this to someone the other day for psoas issues and imbalance. So There's a really good one for balancing the hip flexor actions. Use your abdominal muscles, and then we'll get back to center and come on up. Okay, let's do our standing leg uh, deadlift with uh, out of sequence, so with nothing else. Okay, so standing on your right leg, pick your left knee up. Just hold it there, balancing. Feel that sole of the foot. Feel the butt muscles on the standing leg. And then very slowly, leaning it forward. The reason we slow these things down is you have to use some smaller muscles. You have to recruit some balancing things and then we're gonna come back up. I could keep that leg straight and sneak it through and not touch the floor. Knee back up. When I go slow, I can't just rely on my compensations. I have to sort of face the things that are not so strong in my system, right? Like the um, feeling like I want a barn door open, for example. Usually it's right there as I take that leg back through. That's where people want to wobble the most. Knee comes up. We're just going to do one more. Leg straight back. So you're slowing it down and hopefully not just your ankle and calf are working. Hopefully your butt muscles also getting some work in there. Swing that leg through. Knee comes up and we'll place the foot down. Okay, second side, right knee up. Just hold it for a moment. The knee is above your hips. So you're really trying to use that hip flexor, get that knee up there. And then slowly sneaking it back, working the balance of your left leg, your standing leg. And see, like I always want a barn door right there. I'm like fly open and then swing it through slow. Maybe straight leg sneaks through, knee comes up. And we're just gonna keep going. Nice, slow circle action, finding that balance. Relax the back of your neck. It's the other thing about going slow is you can consciously release some old patterns, some old tension, like some people gripping the hands, gripping your neck, your jaw. And here we go, last one, or your toes, right? That's a common one. Gripping your toes, it might help you with balance, but it's not necessary and then slowly swinging that leg through, knee up, 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 and place the foot down. Okay, here we go, down onto our mat. Let's do it through a squat. So taking your feet wide, turn your toes open, reach your arms forward, and then lowering down, keep your knees wide. And there, there may come a point in your knees where that's just not gonna work and that's okay, but we're working to be able to sit down just like that, um, maybe falling backward, but then rock yourself back up to sit if you can. And balance, bring your heels up, palms face down. Now we're not gonna go quite into the 100, we're gonna, we are in a moment, but we're gonna do a little bit of work first, getting those low abdominal, mus abdominal muscles to draw in and up. So pull in from your pelvic floor, find the pelvic floor, 
See if you can draw in and up like you're pulling away from your tailbone and then keep that as you roll onto your low back. You can bring your knees with you because then I want you to rock back up, right? Using that pelvic floor. So what I want you to practice is I'm doing this four times, four or five times, not pushing your stomach out when you rock back up. Okay, so come back up, balance, and roll back. Pull your stomach back. You're on your sacrum. Now roll back up, pulling your stomach in. Do that again. Shoulder blades back. There's no shoulder action here. I'm just using my low abdominals, pulling back to my spine. One more time. Roll it back. Pull those abdominals in and up. Now pull them in. You can even look at your stomach as you come back up. Okay, so that's a little habit to try to work on that when you're coming up to sit, like getting out of bed in the morning, just for example, you're not pushing your stomach out. That actually leaves your low back a little bit vulnerable, but you're pulling your stomach in. Okay, so here we go into the 100. Using that same action, pulling in from the low pelvic floor up to those abdominal muscles. Now we're on the sacrum. Stretch your legs out either in the high diagonal or up toward the sky, wherever you're at today. Pump your arms, go inhale. And exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, four, five. Reaching long through your fingertips. Stay curled up. Watch your stomach. So here, the stomach is not pumping. It's not moving, right, as you pump your arms. The stomach is holding nice and still. And breathe. Go inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Two more breaths. Inhale. And exhale. Hug the sides of your waist in. And go inhale. And exhale, 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 exhale. Stretch your legs. Stretch your arms overhead. So you can get a big stretch there. Get it out of your system. And then draw your ribs back in. <laughs> so you probably have to draw your arms up a little bit to get those ribs connected back to the abdominals. And we'll do the roll up. So arms come up, head comes up. Now, just like we were doing in that beginning exercise, the stomach doesn't pop out. Exhale, round over. Inhale. So on the first one, it's always nice to bend the knees. And then round it back, pulling the abdominals back. Pull them back, pull them back. Exhale, back. Inhale, arms come up. Head comes up. Pull those abdominals in and up. Exhale, round it over. I'm still pulling in and up here. And I'm still trying to lengthen the sides of my waist away from my pelvis. So think of that now as you come up. We're going to do two more. As I come up, I'm actually lengthening the sides of my waist the whole time. There's no collapse here. And then I'm lengthening it more as I go back down, as I leave my pelvis in place. One more. Arms come up. Head comes up. I think that's the hardest concept for people to understand is this space between the ribs and the pelvis here. How do I keep that as I'm rounding, right? So I'm not letting my ribs get closer to my pelvis. I'm actually getting more and more space. Okay, and then we're on our back. Draw your right knee into your chest. Hug that shin in. Let your foot go. Stretch your left leg long. Relax your shoulders. Sort of hugging in opposition here. And then we're going to go into that stretch we've been doing with the foot. Holding on to the back of the hamstring. Interlace your hands. Bring your leg to a right angle. Left leg down on the mat, so try to get it flat if you can, but then re-engage your abdominals. What we're going for is to have the um, full contact behind that left thigh with the right leg vertical, but then I have to really draw my abdominals. So I'm, have a, I have a neutral spine. Notice my low back is not on the floor, but I'm lengthening it. I'm not doing a funny arch. That's this neutral low back curve. Okay, so see if you can find that. And then... Straighten and point the toes and bend and flex. That's something we should talk about when we get back together. How to have a neutral low back curve that's supported and not just sort of an arch. And then bending and flexing the foot, straighten and point. So much of what we do, especially in beginner Pilates, there's a little tail tuck involved to help you engage your low abdominals. But the sooner we can get out of that, the better. Good, one more time, point, straighten and point, bend and flex, take your knee off to the right, hold on to the sole of your foot, you can curl your head and chest up. Now your left knee could bend, right? So you could have the foot on the ground and then just pull that right knee down to the right. So a little hip opener there. Um, we would like, so like for right now, for example, my tail is tucked. 
to get into this stretch. But we would like to have a neutral pelvis, an untucked tail, without adding extra curve to the low back. So that would be neutral, right? The pelvis is just straight up and down. It's not tip forward, it's not tip back. We'd like to be able to access our exercises from there. Good. Now, we're just gonna place that right foot down for now, both legs straight. Okay, draw your left knee into your chest, hug it in. So here, for example, this is a great place to figure this out. I pull my left knee in, now I'm tucking my tail, my right leg comes off the ground. So that, let's just do that for a moment, right? But now I want you to hug that left knee and stretch your right leg away. That's opposition, they're doing opposite things. Now let your left knee go a little bit and you can get the right leg more on the ground. So I'm untucking my tail, I'm starting to tilt my pelvis a little the other direction. Now interlace your hands behind your thigh and if I push that side more vertical, now I can get my right leg more on the ground Okay, your butt is not in the way, I promise you. Um, but keep pushing your thigh into your hands. Now, there's going to be a little space under your low back. Draw your abdominals in and up. And this should also help stretch that hip flexor on the right side. So you're reaching through that right leg. You're drawing your abdominals back or your psoas muscle back to the spine. And so now I have the stable neutral pelvis, which means there's a little curve in my low back. Let's straighten the leg, point the toes. Bend the knee, flex the ankle. So I don't think one can spend too much time investigating posture, particularly the pelvis, the tilt of the pelvis, the relationship of the thigh bones to the pelvis, because that is our foundation for everything we do. And getting sensitive about where the pelvis is, how those muscles around it are, are firing or slack or tight, it's all really helpful information. Point your toe, bend and flex, and then one more time, straighten and point, and then bend, and we'll take the knee off to the left, curl your head and chest up, hold on to your foot with one or both hands, and then you could bend your right knee if you need to and come back down with your head. And we're just drawing that knee off to the left. You could, of course, do this with a straight right leg as well. That would give you more stretch, and it's totally up to you. We're working on getting the shin vertical, the left shin, and then we'll let it go. Okay, so both legs are straight now. Now, we're gonna work with this neutral pelvis idea. So, pelvic, um, pubic bone is level with the hip bone, these, these um, pelvic points right here. The front of the pelvis, ischial crest. And, um, now, we have the fingertips on the, the pubic bone, and that is flat. If I tucked my tail, my fingertips would be higher than the palm of my hands. If I arched my back, the reverse. My palm of my hands would be higher than my fingertips. So let's find neutral. Keep neutral. Keep your left hand there. Uh, actually, let's keep both hands there. Sorry. Draw your right knee in. Okay. Did you do anything funny? Did you tuck your tail? Did you tip your pelvis? Now, start doing knee circles without letting your pelvis tilt. So I've got a little arch in my low back, but I'm drawing the muscles back underneath my hand to stabilize it, just doing little knee circles. So I'm not plastering my low back down to the mat. This creates a little bit, for some people, it's a little unstable. You're gonna really have to pay attention to the muscles of the pelvis that are holding it there. Reverse your circles, just little knee circles. We're so used to flattening the back and using that tail tuck to help us access abdominal muscles. What happens when you don't do that? Because ideally when you're walking or running, you're not tucking your tail to access your hip stabilizers, okay? And then we're gonna just glide that right leg back down. Okay, both legs are the same length again. Once again, pelvis is neutral. Draw your left knee into your chest and keeping, it, keeping everything where it is. We're just doing little knee circles. If you do too big a range of motion, you'll start tipping your pelvis, drawing the muscles back that are right behind the heel of the hand, right underneath that. That's right where we're going there. There's a sort of wider, right inside the crest of the pelvis there. That's what we're drawing back. That's your psoas muscle, sometimes called the iliopsoas. It's, um, there's also a muscle there called the iliacus, so they get sort of mush together sometimes and then reverse your circles but we're drawing that muscle back check that you're not getting tense in your rib cage or your neck or your shoulders uh, we often translate psoas stability 
up higher and toward the brain. I don't know, maybe the psoas is too far away for the brain to handle. But take your brain a little bit lower, down toward where your hands are. And then one more circle there. And then we'll just glide that left leg back down. Okay. So now keeping this neutral pelvis, we're going to take, bend your knees, draw both knees into your chest. Now, once you do that, you've, you've lost your neutral, right? So we're going to get back to it in just a moment. But notice how your tail is tucked. Untuck your tail. Let your knees fall away from you. Take your legs up toward the ceiling. This makes your low back feel vulnerable, okay? So what you need to do is stabilize it with those muscles underneath your hands. Draw them back. Let your rib cage come down to the mat. Really press the upper back down to the mat. So stop trying to arch your upper back. Push it down to the mat. Keep your low back off the mat. Now, just keeping your right leg where it is, take the left leg down to 45 degrees and back up. Hip stabilizing. Pull those muscles in from behind your hands. Hold them there. Don't let your ribs move. Relax your neck and shoulders. One more time with the left leg. We're just going to about 45 degrees and back. Now, right leg. 45 degrees and back. I'm just doing a slow motion, tiny little scissor kick back and forth from vertical to 45, holding everything still and back to center. Now we're just going to scissor the legs alternating one and then the other. And of course, you might have to do this with bent knees. If it's too tight in the tops of your quadriceps, just bend your knees. And we can still do the same pelvic work working on those stabilizers. Maybe it's even more accessible for some of you, okay? And then back to neutral, and we'll bend the knees and place the feet down. Okay, so let's roll over onto our stomach and stretch out those hip flexors a little bit, and then we'll go into the abdominal series. So here we are on our stomach, face down. Go ahead and bring one hand by your shoulder, and then take the other hand, palm face up, onto your low back. I'm gonna have my forehead down on the mat. And then once my palm is face up, I'm actually gonna turn my hand down and try to feel, I should say, I'm gonna turn, turn my thumb into my low back muscle. Some of you remember doing this in the studio. If you don't, I'll try to talk you through it. So now my thumb is on my low back muscle, that ropey muscle right next to my spine, my left thumb. Reach your left leg away, stretch it so far away that that ropey muscle underneath your thumb sort of disappears. Got it? <laughs> okay. Now engage your butt muscle, engage your hamstring, lifting your left leg. Lift it up and down, left leg, just about an inch, and keeping that muscle underneath your thumb from barely engaging. It's definitely not, I, I, I don't want it to pop out, so it might get a little bit snug. You'll feel it fire. Just lifting that left leg, reaching the left leg out of the hip socket as strong as you can, pulling open that left hip. One more time, lifting the left leg and back down. Okay, bring your left hand by your shoulder, right hand, palm face up to your low back, and then use your thumb, to, so you're going to rotate your hand there, use your thumb on that ropey low back muscle. If you're not sure where that ropey muscle is, lift your head up and you'll, you should be able to feel it pop right up. Okay, and then place your head back down. Maybe it softens a little bit. Then reach your right leg away so much, you really, really stretch out through that right hip that that muscle disappears, or it starts to, at least it starts to soften. Engage your right leg. Can you engage your right leg without that muscle popping up? Get you got to get your butt muscle and your hamstrings to fire for you. Use your low abdominals. And then we're just lifting the right leg just barely. Now, here's the thing people really want to do. They want to bend their knee here. That is a sign of a sort of disorganized pelvic muscle system. So reach to that right leg. Do not bend your knee. And instead, try to get your mind on your butt muscles, on your hamstrings, to lift the leg one more time, lifting and back down, and then place your right hand by your shoulders. Okay, now we're going to try both legs at the same time. So forehead down. Hands will stay by your shoulders, relax your elbows, relax your shoulders. Reach both legs away from you, strong, really traction. Extend, extend, extend. Uh, grab the, uh, I should say, tone the back of your butt muscles and your hamstrings and lift both legs just half an inch and back down. Half an inch lift and back down. Now let's engage those abdominal muscles. Draw them in and up, lift your legs and back down, and one more time, reaching out of the legs, lift, 
and back down. Okay, good. And we'll sit all the way back. Okay, so that's like trying to get the psoas muscle to fire appropriately. And now we'll see if we can keep using it in our abdominal series, keep using it appropriately. It has, it's such a big muscle and it can fire different parts of it and it can do different things at different times. Um, it has a whole life. <laughs> your psoas muscle. All right, hold on to your shins, balance. That same thing right here, we're pulling in, in and up through, from the pelvic floor through the abdominals. Hold your right knee, stretch your left leg out, and land on your sacrum. I'm touching down right at the very tip of the shoulder blades. Reach that left leg out, and then switch, and reach that left leg out, just like we were reaching it on our stomach. I'm opening up the front of that hip, and reach. And as I open up the front of the hip, I'm going to pull my abdominals in and up more. So again, good opposition activity. I reach the leg and I pull the abdominals in and up. That can really resolve some hip, certain hip issues. When you get this sort of um, congestion up in that hip joint, reach, open up your hip, pull the abdominals in and up, lift up out of that leg, lift up out of that leg. So we're going a little slow so you can find that. And one more on the right side and one more on the left side and then rest. Okay, so double leg stretch, great opportunity to open up the front of the hips. If you take it, so here's the trick though. Um, if your abdominals are not so strong yet, you have to keep your legs up higher and that makes it a little trickier to find the extension. And so here we go, hold on to your shins. I'll show you a little trick for that. Okay, so what I'm talking about is if I have to do double leg stretch like this, here we go, inhale, reach long. It's a lot harder to open up my hips, right? Exhale. So what I can do is inhale, and I'm really pushing this away from me. Exhale, I'm not thinking of my legs reaching. I'm thinking of the very top of my thighs reaching toward the end of my mat, and exhale. So don't even think about your legs. Just keep your heels together, but don't think about reaching them, right? Exhale. Think about stretching the top of your thigh bones away from your abdominals. Exhale. And then otherwise, I'd be down here. And it's a lot easier to stretch the legs away, and that opens up the pelvis. But that requires some abdominal strength. One more, and exhale that we don't always have, and rest. Okay. But it's so good to learn this, this technique of how to get space in the hip joints, no matter what, whatever your limitations or positions are. So here we go. So same thing with this exercise, scissors. Hold on to the back of your legs, curl your head and chest up. So here our legs are vertical. How do I get this space right here, right? I could take my hands to the top of my thighs and push them away and then pull my abdominals in and up. Try that. Hands on the top of your thighs. Push right at the crease of the pelvis there. Push your thighs away and now pull your abdominals in and up. That's a great exercise. <laughs> so fun, okay? And then that's basically what we're doing the whole time as we hold on to one leg and the other leg lowers. So I've got the openness there, but this leg is still reaching away. Here, it's reaching away and switch legs. And the top of that thigh is reaching away. So see if you can keep that space. Keep going, do your scissors now. Yep, so we're scissoring the legs, holding onto the back of the calves. But the whole time, I'm pretending there's a bar or something, in the, maybe a pool noodle. It's in the way here. And I can't bring my thighs any closer. See, I'm using my hands to pretend like they're a pool noodle. <laughs> keeping my legs from getting closer to my hips and rest. <laughs> okay. I look forward to doing that in person with you and uh, helping people figure that one out. <laughs> Double leg stretch. It's really funny to try to describe it to an invisible audience. Hold on to the back of your legs. Curl your head and chest up. One hand behind the other, the base of the skull. Legs up toward the ceiling. So it's that same action of thigh bones pushing away from the pelvis and lower. Now right here, as I come back up, I gotta leave my thigh bones behind, at least in my mind's eye, right? Lower the legs. And now look, I'm gonna leave the top of the thighs behind to pull back up. So I'm not trying to grip from right here to pull my legs in and up. That is the most common issue with double leg lift. People really try to bunch up here and it does not feel good. So you could bend your knees and work it that way and really try to leave the sit bones behind, leave the thigh bones behind. Lower the legs 
and then look, I'm leaving my thigh bones behind. It's so important to figure that action out. You will get so much relief in your hips. One more time, lower, 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 and lift up, 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 and release. I would say that's the number one thing that made abdominal work accessible to me was figuring out how to free up all the bunchiness and sort of discomfort of hip flexor gripping um, every time I try to engage my abdominals and figuring out how to, how to get that space at the top of the thighs. Okay, crisscross. Here we go. Hold on to your shins, curl your head and chest up. One hand behind the other at the base of the skull. Left leg reaches long, cross to your right, and then switch. Now just check that you're not puffing your stomach out. So the stomach is pulling in, and I'm just crossing from one tip of the shoulder blade to another, opening up the hip as I reach, opening it up as I reach, open and stretch, open and stretch, and stay curled up there, and we'll go three, three, two, two, and one, one, and rest. Okay, rock yourself up to sit, and hands and knees are a great position to have this neutral, figure out this neutral pelvis thing. So here we are, and right here, you can figure out if you're tucking your tail, at least you can feel, are you purposely tucking your tail? Are you purposely sagging your low back and, and lifting your tail? What I want you to notice is, so go ahead and sag your low back, and lift your tail. Now here's the cool thing. You can keep your tail lifted and unsag your low back. So keep the tail lifted, but just lift the abdominals and come more into neutral. And you might you might have over tucked um, you might have over tipped your pelvis. You might have to come back to neutral with the pelvis too. But see if you can find a tabletop where the pelvis is level all the way out through the crown of the head. You have that nice level surface. There's a little curve in the low back, but you're supporting it with your abdominal muscles. Okay, now the game is, can you keep that, slide your right foot on the mat, but slide it out behind you. Keeping that neutral pelvis, low abdominals lifted, lift that right leg up and bring it back down. So the, the thing is, can you keep your pelvis from moving as you do this. So it's not unlike when we were on our stomach, lifting the leg and not so much involving the low back muscles. I'm lifting my low abdominals and I'm just lifting that right leg back and forth, toes and knees straight down to the ground. One more time, lift and lower, bring that knee in, okay? And the left leg. So before we go into, before you stretch your left leg back though, come back to, to neutral here, Lift your abdominal muscles, hold your pelvis right there. Sneak your left leg back, toes down on the mat, knees face down. Now lift that leg and we just go back and forth. These are subtle, they're not like big exercises, but they're important exercises, like I said, for pelvic stability so that we can then go do other things. But if your pelvis is not organized, it's not firing in a coordinated fashion, let's lift one more time and bring that knee back. Then we're gonna have some weird problems crop up over time, right? Okay, now reach your hands out, downward facing dog. Here we go. So down dog is a hard one for people. If the hamstrings are tight, you're almost certainly gonna tuck your tail. So bend your knees, take the hamstrings out of it a little bit, take the calf muscles out of it a little bit. They'll be stretching, but at least you'll be able to get your tail up there. So bend your knees more than you think. Notice my heels are not touching the ground. If I try to bring my heels down to the ground, I'm almost certainly gonna tuck my tail. So we've got the knees bent. I've got the front ribs tucking in slightly. So there's some integration there. My abdominals are supporting that low back curve. Stay there, take your right leg up to the sky. So I'm bending my knee and then right knee in toward the chest. So we're just gonna swing it back and forth like this. Right knee lifts, right knee into chest. And I'm trying to hold everything else still. I'm gonna get a good calf stretch this way but I'm also just opening up that hip flexor. See, as I take my knee behind me, I can't actually go into too much of a back arch because my left leg is holding my pelvis still. One more time, knee up, knee in the chest. Place that foot down. Okay, and now holding everything still right where it is with the pelvis, take your left leg up. So I'm gonna do it with a bent knee though. Um, so I'm opening up my left hip flexor. 
and then left knee in the chest. And just back and forth. So I'm trying to hold my hips steady. I'm not tucking my tail. I'm not arching my low back. I'm holding my rib cage steady, my arms steady. And I'm just lifting that knee, drawing it into the chest. Lifting that knee, drawing it into the chest. And then place that foot down. Okay, now stay with it with your arms. This is good weight bearing on the arms. Taking that knee bend a little further. Take your right knee up, knee up to the sky. Knee into chest, step the foot forward. This time you're gonna have to tuck your tail and shift your weight because we're stepping the foot to the right hand. And now keep your knee as close to your chest as you can. Lift your right foot up and take the right knee back. Okay, so then we knee into chest. So it's like we're curling up into a little ball and step forward. Try to keep your chest on your thigh. Lift your heel to your hip. Take your knee back up to the sky. Knee into chest. Keep your chest and knee close. Same thing here. Keep your chest and knee close. Pick up that heel. Take the leg back. Place that foot down. Okay, second side. Your arms should be getting a little bit tired. That's okay. All right, we're not going to be here too much longer. Take your left knee. Bend your knee. Lift it up to the sky. Hug your knee into your chest. Step your foot forward. So you're going to shift your weight forward. Now keep your chest and knee toward each other, maybe even touching. Lift your left heel to your hip and then knee up to sky. Okay, knee into chest, keep them as close together as you can, step it forward. Now keep them close, lift from your heel, like you're trying to lift your heel to your hip, and then knee goes to sky, knee into chest, step your foot forward, keep your weight close to your thigh, lift that heel up, lift that knee up, place that left foot down. Good, come on to your knees, and we'll come on to the forearms, Turn your palms face up, spread your fingers wide. Try to get the back of your wrists onto the mat. So just spreading that way, opening up the wrists again. And then try to get your fingernails on the mat. See if you can get all 10 fingernails, including the thumbnails down and the back of the wrist down. Take a nice breath there and then release. And we'll come on to forearms proper. And we'll do a little forearm plank because why not? Okay, so elbows are narrow shoulder distance apart, forearms parallel, and we'll walk the feet back and lift up. Now, all the things we've learned today come into play here. I'm stretching my legs out of my pelvis as I pull my abdominals in and up. It's hard to find opposition here. I feel like I can reach my legs back, but I don't know about pulling the abdominals in and up toward my head. So I'm still picturing it, trying to find that. And then I'm hugging the sides of my waist in. Hug those in nice and snug. Stay with it for three, two, one, and come down. Okay. And, oops, trying to get my timer to work here. Okay, so now on hands and knees again, working with this pelvic stability, we're gonna take the right arm up, just reaching it out forward, and then right arm goes back, palm face up. So we're just going back and forth with the arm. See that? Palm face up behind you, palm face down in front of you. So I'm just swinging the arm through the shoulder joint. You should be able to clear the floor. If your left elbow is straight, you'll be able to clear the floor. Okay, one more time out in front of you. Place that right hand down. Nice, straight, strong right arm. Left arm out in front of you. And it swings back. So we're going to build on this in a moment. I'm just showing you the arm action. Palm face up reach it out. So just get that nice pendulum action through the shoulder. Your fingertips might graze the floor, but if you push strong through that right elbow, you're going to barely touch. Okay. And back and out forward and place that hand down. Okay. Now adding the leg action to that. So we're going to go right arm up, palm face down, left leg back behind us. As I take the arm back, I'm drawing the knee into the chest and back and forth. So it's a little cross crawl pattern. Maybe the last time you did this, you were about one years old. <laughs> and we take the palm back, knee into chest. So we're just going like this. And we go for four. I gotta push my left arm straight. Three, two, and one. And bring that hand and knee down. Okay, it's nice straight arm. And the arm that's weight bearing, the crease of the elbow, the inside eye of the elbow, 
just slightly turns forward. That's going to give you a little more stability in that shoulder joint. So left arm up, right leg back, and I start to swing the arm, draw the knee in. And I'm not doing anything big with my chest. That's mostly holding still. I'm just drawing the knee into the chest and the arm back, arm forward, leg back. Get a nice pendulum action going. <laughs> Reaching arm and leg. Go two, hug it in, and one, hug it in, and back. Good. So that's, again, it's good arm work too. So let's do um, a little, taking that hip flexor action a little bit faster now. Coming on to your, uh, up into your downward facing dog. So we were practicing the stepping forward with a chest on the thigh. Do that a few times alternating sides. So without taking your leg back, just step your right foot forward to your right hand and step it back. And then left foot to left hand and step it back. So we're just going back and forth like that, right? Working those hip flexors. This might seem like a pretty easy action to you. That's great if it is. Right, I'm just stepping my foot forward right to the back of the heel of my hand, alternating sides. My arms are staying pretty straight. I might bend a little bit. I might come up on my fingertips a little bit. Right, but I'm just going back and forth. Get that going. <laughs> yep. So it's like a, it's like a, a slightly modified, um, what do we call it? Ah, mountain climbers. Okay. It's like a low-key version of mountain climbers. Back and forth. Keep going. Keep going. We're going three and two and one. Okay. And come up, walk your feet forward, come up to stand. Okay. That ability to step your foot forward and back is a really good hip flexor exercise. Now, one that we have not done to complement the hip flexors, of course, are the glutes. We gotta get the glutes to fire. So we got these to fire properly, and we got glutes to, to help them out. So here we go. We're gonna do this cross balance lunge from standing. Um, without anything else. So you know the cross balance lunge probably, um, you'll learn it fast here. Stand on your left leg, take your right foot behind you and off to the side, bend your knee, bend so low that you can touch down. Then come back up. I'm not touching on that right leg and I'm just gonna cross it behind me. Just this for right now. I'm not touching down with that right leg, it's hovering and I'm coming back up. We're just gonna do three more. Ready, lower down, balance, go low enough that you could touch the ground easily with your fingertips. You don't have to touch, but just know that you could. Two, and back up. Relax your neck and shoulders, and last one. I'm crossing behind me, hovering with that leg, and back up, and stand. Okay, second side. So standing on the right leg, left leg nice and easy. I'm relaxing my upper body, and I'm just starting to go down, sitting my butt back, cross that leg behind you low enough that I can touch, and back up. I got my sit bone way back there. So I'm reaching my butt cheeks <laughs> way back behind me to do this, and back up. Often, the reason we don't normally do this this way is it tends to be a little quad-centered, we would like to get into the butt bones. Back up, we're gonna do two more. So you gotta sit way back there. When the glutes are not so strong, we tend to rely on the thighs a bit too much. Yeah, so just challenge yourself, lean it back, lean your butt back, lean it back, lean it back, lean it back, and come back up and down. So I know I'm hitting it just right if I start to fall over because I know that I'm relying on my glutes a little bit more which are not so strong. Okay, last one, squat jumps. So 30 seconds, getting our heart rate up, really up, and we're gonna touch down and jump up. And it's really funny teaching this because it's, um, it's rather hard to talk while I do it. But here we go, 30 seconds, get your heart rate as high as you can. So even if you can't jump, do the vigorous upper arm part and that'll help you get your heart rate up. Here we go, we touch down and jump up. Touch, 
push off those toes. Work the jump. If you're not a jumper, just because like you're me, you're like me and you just don't like the jump, make yourself jump. If your knees hurt, you get a pass. But otherwise, <laughs> you got to jump. Make yourself push off those feet, get a little air. I did not like jumping. Well, I still don't like jumping because I have a little hip dysplasia and it just always feels so, I just feel so awkward and heavy. And anyway, so I make myself jump. I really learned to jump about three years ago. It was very satisfying. Keep going. Oh, that's 40 seconds. Good. Phew. Okay. Suck out your heart rate up, hopefully. Come into extended child's pose. So you got your heart up, and then you bring it all the way down, head down. You should feel it pick up um, for a second there. When you stop, you should feel your breath rate and heart rate pick right up. So they're trying to compensate, get that blood moving through. You just briefly increased your blood pressure. Now it's going to drop back down. You got your head below your heart. I love how resilient the body is, how intelligent and adaptable. I mean, I couldn't even jump over <laughs> a two by four, <laughs> you know, five years ago. And, uh, <laughs> And then I made myself learn to jump, and I started being able to do box jumps about, I don't know, maybe 15 inches high. And it's so, so satisfying. Stretch your arms out. So there's always those things. We're, we may be adults, but we can still have fun learning new things. Let's come to downward facing dog. It's good for the brain. It's good for your sense of efficacy. Why not? <laughs> Find something you thought you would never do before and figure it out. It's like a, it's a game, right? Figure out how to make all the pieces work. Let's walk the feet forward to the hands. And in what way could you do the activity? It's not going to look probably the way you thought it would look when you were 10. Or maybe even your expectations now. But we're adaptable. That's what's fun your head below your heart and then we'll bend the knees bring the head in line with the heart and just do go ahead and hug your leg muscles into the legs that will help stabilize your blood pressure so then when you come up to stand you're not so dizzy big inhale stretch up and exhale and you're ready for your day awesome thanks for joining me